Let's go. Hey, all right, welcome back. We're just zipping through the first hour here of a liquid lunch. Uh, it's a Woman Wednesday liquid lunch, my favorite day of the week, because, uh, you know, quite frankly, uh, a recent poll said that 65% uh, of the households in America, the women make the uh, final decision on, uh, on money matters. They basically control the purse strings. The husbands uh, usually go out and work and get a few dollars allowance in their pocket, but the women make the big decisions. So uh, the women perspective is quite important to me. And uh, women live longer. Women are actually the majority on the planet now. There's actually more women than men on the planet. Uh, women are healthier. Women are more organized. So uh, I have women all the time, power women. Um, but on Wednesday, I try to load it up with the woman's perspective to try to talk some sense into the portion of our audience that identifies as male today. Now, uh, one thing that Frankie and I have been talking about on Liquid Lunch for over a year now is uh, bail reform. New York did it terribly. They left no discretion to the judges. New Jersey did it a little better, but still, um, and the one expert we always leaned on um, to give us the real rubber meets the road analysis of what's happening was my next guest, who is known around the uh, country and the world as the uh, bail bond queen, the queen of bail bonds, but she's also um, CEO and founder of Empire Bail Bonds and uh, the president of the National Association of Bail Agents, Michelle Askenazi is with us. And Michelle, no one, um, I've had financial experts on, I've had market experts, I have political experts. No one has been more on point with their commentary than you on bail reform. And you were saying when it was being proposed, not because your business could get hurt. This is the worst thing ever because recidivism is bad already. You were seeing the same people. But now with no cash bail, um, these people just have no incentive to stop committing crimes. And now it's on display for all of us. Well, what do you say? Other than I told you so, what do you say? Uh, well, there's two things that I want to be clear about. The first thing out of the gate is that New Jersey did not do it better. The Republican Party should be very embarrassed that Chris Christie sold out the citizens of the state of New Jersey and that New Jersey is publicly taxpayer funding the criminal release system. So that's thing one. And then thing two is something that you said at the beginning, John. You were talking about moms, and you were saying how we control the purse spring, uh, strings, and you know I'm a mother of four, so yep. I'm a mother of four before I'm the bail bond queen or anything else in life, right? Of course. So, yeah, of course. So, you know, the thing about it is, and I could just make this very Brooklyn simple for everybody, John. I could sum bail reform up. No boom, cursing. Like that. <laughs> no cursing. Boom, boom, like that. You want to know how? They took the decision making, the government took the decision making away from the moms, the grandmothers and the aunties. We run the households. Normally, us single mothers, sometimes we have to work two and three jobs to get our kids through. And the fact of the matter is when little Johnny used to go to jail before bail reform, it was me as auntie that got to decide. Well, he did this three times. Now he's going to sit on Rikers Island for 72 hours and let him think about what he did before I even take his next phone call. So now what they've decided is they decided the government gets to make the decision of who gets out of jail. So let me, let me, let me, wait, let me just ask you on that point, because that's a great point. Um, and it's a great point for Woman Wednesday. And you know, I mean, you started a business as a woman, which, you know, back when you started, um, you were handicapped in many ways, right? You were a single mom, you were a domestic violence survivor. Um, and to start a business and succeed, you had all the odds against you. But now that you're in the business, you rose to the level of queen. Um, obviously, <laughs> obviously, you know, the queen runs the household. Um, how, what percentage would you say when little Johnny does get in trouble, what percentage of people that come down to bail them out, put up their house, put up money, put up jewelry, what, uh, what percentage is the moms and the aunts and the grandmas and what percent is the dads? I would say 80-20. You would say it's 80% the female that's there to make some deal? 100%. And the, the fathers, the fathers, if they're around, they're like, let them sit there for a little while. And it's the, the matriarch of the family that's usually coming down saying, Michelle, you got to help me out here. You got to get this kid out. I don't want him to go to Rikers or saying, you know what, Michelle, uh, let him sit there and sweat it for a few days before he gets out of there. Is that right? 
right. It's the matriarch or the matriarch junior. You know what I mean? It's the sister calling for mom because mom is an RN and she's doing her second shift at Coney Island Hospital. Right. So let me ask you this. In New York, we had a guy a few months back that robbed a bank. He got arrested. He didn't have a weapon on him. They gave, he made believe he had a weapon. They gave him the money. He got out. He got caught. He went out. They threw him in, released, went back out, robbed another bank, uh, got caught again, threw him in, got out again. Somebody, they interviewed him, and he said, I can't even believe they let me out. This system is great. I mean, the criminals, are, the criminals are cracking up laughing. Listen, you know, the fact of the matter is I didn't make up criminal recidivists. It was a population that existed long before you and I ever existed, John. You know what I'm saying? So yes. the fact of the matter is, is that they actually exist. However, the left wants to cover them up with flowery language and different branding. I mean, that's on their PR firms. But the fact of the matter is they actually do exist. They're, they're, they're a population of humans that exist on the earth. And obviously, they are running a muck. Yeah, no, it, it sure looks that way. Now, um, let's get to the even bigger news. Um, browsing my way through the Internet, doing some research, homework, this, that, and the other thing. Um, and all of a sudden, on my feed pops up this Forbes article. And Forbes is, you know, as you know, it's, you know, the magazine for the rich and famous. Um, and there's a whole story about the bail bonds, Queen, how this founder <laughs> became a driving force in the bail bond industry. And I'm thinking just from the headline, wait a minute, they better mention Michelle's name in this. And then I see the picture. I'm like, <laughs> I know that hair anywhere. Holy cow. <laughs> Forbes wrote an article about Michelle. <laughs> she really hit the big time. How does that happen? Uh, they yeah. seek you out because, I mean, I guess you've risen to such a level now that, um, and you've been on the money with bail reform, and you're, you're like now looked at as a, a national expert. Well, I mean, and I appreciate that. There was a writer from Forbes that had reached out to me before COVID. I did this interview in all, you know, in all honesty. And I guess, you know, she was waiting to drop it at the right time. And she did. And, you know, listen, I'm abundantly grateful because I am... Um, I am that girl. Listen, I'm a domestic violence survivor. I, I was on welfare. I had, I had two and a half children because my son was in my belly. Um, and, um, you know, now I have four. Thank God. Later on, I had another one in life. But, uh, and she's wonderful. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, it's just, you know, women, like you said at the opening of your show, and I think it's so poignant on Women Wednesday, we as women... And you know from being Italian-American, you know that I'm Cuban-American. We are patrona. You know, we do run the house. We can not only make the dinner, but, you know, we somehow get make sure all the bills are paid. Everybody got their doctor's appointments. Everybody got their inoculations. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> we always are that type of running yeah. force. And I, and I always say, listen, a lot of us pray to Christ, including me. And you know what? If it weren't for the Virgin Mother, we wouldn't have Jesus Christ either. Yeah. Um, look, I'm totally with you. Um, I was, you know, raised by some great parents and we had a great matriarch and my dad. But, you know, my mom was still running the household. So my father, like you said, he was working two jobs, three jobs. My mother worked. She was a private investigator at one point. Um, but, you know, we 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 have that. But uh, just on the last thing, you know, with this whole Black Lives Matter on that point, with this whole Black Lives Matter, Michelle, um, you probably work with more black people than anyone because minorities, unfortunately, dominate the, the criminal justice system. But um, if I said to you in a sentence, say, Michelle, black lives matter, me and you would sit there and say, damn right they matter. Or every life matters. But this group has hijacked a sentence and made it a truism. And it's really a front for Marxists. And one of the things they want to do is pointed right at what you were saying. They want to break up the nuclear family because they want right. to eliminate individualism. And um, honestly, most of the black folks that I know, my friends that are black and minorities, they don't agree with the movement Black Lives Matter. They agree with the saying. Everyone agrees with it. Um, is, 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 do you see this as another attack on the family unit? <laughs> Well, I mean, I definitely do, John. I mean, the fact of the matter is it's not just Black Lives Matter. I mean, brown, polka dotted, rainbow and yellow and green lives matter. We all matter. You know, 
that's a crock of shit that only one call. <laughs> you see, <laughs> you see, you promised me. <laughs> you Bye. know what? Do you know what? Um, I I think you were talking about your boat. I didn't realize it was an actual ship. But I mean, it is a ship, isn't it? But uh, it's a big ship. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a yacht, as a matter of fact. <laughs> we gotta, we're out of time. We gotta leave it there. You are the bomb. Thank you so much. I love you're you. You're the best. I'm sorry. Nah, you're the best. She's the uh, president of the National Association of Bail Agents. She's the CEO and founder of Empire Bail Bonds. And all I can say is we had her first before she was big time. I love you, Michelle. Thank you. Love you too. See you Say soon. hi to Frankie. She was okay. always big time. But uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with more Liquid Lunch right after this.